All right. Well, okay. We are happy to feature our guest, Michael Bennett. He is with uh, Actum. He is the strategy and growth lead over there. And today's topic, we're going to be talking about accountability. And that's not normally a word people have positive association with. But <laughs> we actually internally see it uh, as a really powerful strategy that you can tap into uh, to generate commission checks on a regular basis. And not just commission checks in for real estate agents, but for anyone who's in sales, whether you're in escrow sales, title sales, we see accountability as a really powerful tool. The thing about accountability um, is that it's 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 a counterbalance to the internal voice in you that's giving you excuses not to pick up the phone, not to do leads, uh, lead calling, lead gen of any sort, door knocking, whatever the case might be. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of things like we, ha we have to be honest about the fact that human nature really kind of pushes against all of the th all of the uncomfortable things a successful salesperson needs to do to do lead gen on a regular basis. Yeah. And so when you have an accountability tool, when you have an accountability person, and this is why I'm really excited to talk to Michael, because I think that ultimately uh, one of the things that Actum does really well is it takes this to a human relationship and it doesn't have some abstract machine hold you accountable. But when you have someone that you have to answer to, you're going to have an internal voice driving you to make sure you have something to say. So that's today's topic. And uh, Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about your job at Actum and before that even, like how did how did you get here? Like what made you so passionate about working in the accountability space? Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on. Um, happy Friday to everyone. Yeah. So my, I'll start maybe with my Aloha Friday. We're calling in from Hawaii today. So maybe I'll start a little bit more with my background and then tying that in a Um So, you know, I spent around seven and a half years in Silicon Valley prior to joining Octum. Uh, and, you know, my whole time there was on focus on building out high performance sales and marketing teams. You know, the companies that I've been with, we've raised over $200 million in capital you know, funded by some of the best VCs in the entire world. And, you know, I had, you know, essentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in budget per year, or actually, excuse me, per month to hold my teams and so forth accountable, whether it be on sales pipeline, whether it be on Legion tools and so forth. Um, and I joined up with Octum uh, around two years ago. It's uh, the company of some of my best friends. And uh, we essentially are all marketing and kind of sales tech geeks. And we said, what if, and we really started with this hypothesis or I guess thesis of what if we could give a similar set of tools that I had to the real estate industry, specifically the broker teams and their agents for, you know, a, a, instead of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, hundreds of dollars per month. Uh, and uh, uh, really allow the teams to drive and, and, and build out these high growth, high performance sales teams. Um, and so that's what we really do at Octum. We're really focused. Our North Star as a metric is driving conversion, right, for the broker teams that we work with. Uh, but within that, how do you actually get to that conversion rate? So many times I hear people say, well, our conversion rate is, is bad or we need to blow up everything or, you know, <laughs> Uh, fire all the agents or these crazy things. And I'll start with just saying like, well, are your agents following up? No, my agents never follow up. Well, okay, what are you doing to coach them? How are you measuring and tracking that and so forth? And so this is where we've really found a phenomenal sweet spot in the market. I can talk a little bit more about the teams that we work with uh, and so forth, but, but that's really at the core of what we're focused on. How do we drive lead conversion? And a huge fundamental tenant of that is Accountability is providing tools and analytics to help broker team leads, operations directors, sales coaches hold the agents accountable and in a data driven way, not a way like you were mentioning earlier, you have that internal kind of talk and, oh, you know, my broker team lead is coming down on me because they don't like me. Often removes <laughs> that from the equation, right? Here are yeah. your numbers. Here's where you're doing well. Here's where we can coach you up to get better. That's it. That's interesting. So what you're doing is you're is you're basically saying, "Hey, man, it's not personal. We're just taking a look at these things yeah. here, right?" I really love that. What what drove you guys to to think like that? Um, that's that's a really good question. So I I, I think part of it is just when I've looked and you know I study 
and am friends with some of the best entrepreneurs throughout the world and so forth, uh, especially, you know, in Silicon Valley, kind of in the traditional technology and software as a service space, all of these companies, whether it be their sales teams or their product development teams, or even their engineering teams are data-driven teams, right? Now, of course, they're, they're, they're charismatic people. Of course, they're world-class <laughs> in sales and everything else. But, but really, the core fundamental thing holding these teams together is that they are data-driven. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's this misconception that uh, you either have to be data-driven and just not very you know, colorful as a team, so to speak, or you have to be charismatic, but your wheels are falling off you know, as the business is getting growing. And you actually, to become truly world-class, yeah, you need a phenomenal culture. Yeah, you need to have, I think, a phenomenal vision of what you're doing and great agents, but you actually need to have a data-driven approach to getting better. You need to understand your pipeline. Uh, you need to understand which agents in coaching in certain areas and so forth. And so that's kind of how we converge and built the product, which is really has three pieces to it. Understanding your team performance, coaching up the individual agents, and then managing lead pipeline. All right. Well, I think I think that actually gives us a really great place to kind of dive in. So um, you yeah. said, let's start with uh, understanding team performance. So that's a big yeah. idea. What does that look like in your opinion? Yeah, so, um, I'll, and and let me know, I can pull up the screen here and even show uh, an example, but I'll maybe start by just talking through. I think when I talk with a lot of team leads that come in, every every team lead will tell you, okay, we have a conversion problem. We have a pipeline <laughs> problem, right? Like who, I, I don't know anyone in, not just in real estate, but in business as a whole, that would tell you that that's not a problem. We're all looking to get better and improve. And then- I'll ask them, I'll say, okay, well, within your pipeline, you aren't getting the results that you want on a team level. Do you have a top of funnel? Do you have a mid funnel? Do you have a bottom of funnel problem? And they'll be like, I have no idea. And so the reality is that the conversion rate, right? If you look at your overall business, right? Your conversion rate is driven through stages of a sales funnel. And so when we tying this back in accountability, if I have a problem top of funnel, it's much different than I have a problem bottom of funnel. So if I have a problem bottom of funnel, I need to be holding that just say my agents responsible towards and accountable for moving the deals, uh, the offers written into an actual pending or closed deal, which is a much different discussion to be had than for example, moving uh, a new lead that's coming in and getting them to be connecting with them, right? And engaging them and moving them through the pipeline. And those are actually both very different accountability conversations. Now there are some similar threads within them, but that's one example. The other example um, that I'll bring up that I think another thing that every team has is they won't know, uh, they'll have an agent that just is, and as we know with agents, they want as many leads as they can get their hands <laughs> on, right? But, but a lot of agents, once they get to a certain number, they can actually handle that volume of leads. And so one of the things that we have within our product is we have a very simple matrix. It's not rocket science that just shows, okay, here is the average amount of leads per agent on your team. And here's the av average conversion rate. So if you I have an agent- you pull that up real quick and let's take yeah. a look at that. Cause that, I, I've seen the matrix, I think, on your website, and I think yeah. that it would be helpful to visualize this as you're talking about it. Um, so it's a four square matrix, right? Um, and the the framing of it is basically, it does a couple things, but th one of the things it does is it helps you to see who your growth people are. Yeah. There we go. And I'm going to add it to the stream here and move some things around from a branding perspective. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, none of what I just said really makes sense, but we made it look good on the video. So you should subscribe, by the way, over at YouTube to Marketing Trench and yes. watch the videos because especially for this one, I think you're going to kind of want to get eyes on what we're talking about here. Um, but anyway, okay. So uh, Michael has pulled up the actual Octum platform. So we're looking at a demo instance of this. Walk us through what this matrix is. Yeah, so what this simply does is we call it segments by stage conversion or agent quadrant internally. And what we're really doing here is looking at the median of leads crossed by the average conversion rate. Now, why is this important? 
Well, it's important because this is how you actually identify agents for lead allocation or lead distribution and coaching opportunities. So if I'm an agent that has above average amount of leads, but below average conversion rate, what is that? Like, what's the key message there from the broker or the sales coach or the director of operations? Well, over a long enough period, when I'm looking at that and they're stuck there, it means that they aren't having time to actually follow up. They're critical. They aren't having time to actually follow up with the leads because we're feeding them maybe so much or they're taking out so much, but their conversion rate is below the team average. All right. It's a, it's so a coaching opportunity. A hundred percent. Or it may be the opportunity to just, hey, you have all these leads. You aren't being able to, to work them. And me as a coach, I don't. I, when I'm looking at this, I don't necessarily need to yell at the agent about this and so forth. I can actually turn that into a positive for the agent. Hey, you know, you're doing phenomenal on this one group of leads, but you have too much that aren't really, you know, aren't, aren't a high uh, a chance of conversion. You know, let me pull some of this back and let's let's focus on the leads that are really going to convert, really help you close, really help you get that commission check. This is a big thing tying into the, you know, just the theme of the pod uh, of this pod today is you know, a lot of agents end up chasing hundreds of leads instead of focusing on those 10 leads that actually are going to result in a deal and a sale that are going to be that check for them at the end of the month, end of the quarter and so forth. And so a quadrant like this, I mean, again, like it's not rocket science, but it gives you just a very simple data driven way to kind of look at your team and start to say, which agents need coaching, who needs more leads, hmm. what I like to call my whiskey and wine agents, my top performers. These are the people <laughs> that uh, that you send a, a, a bottle of, or in, in, uh, in Ricardo's case, a, bottle, a, a nice <laughs> bottle of tequila um, that, that you send that to. Um, and, and similar to like this pipeline funnel, right? This stuff is not rocket science, but if I can show you where the biggest areas of choke points are within your sales funnel, right? You can then start as a business owner or a director of operations. Again, these are kind of the, the profiles that will use us. Uh, I can start to pull the lever and say, okay, we're having a problem. We saw this with the team in Florida. They were having a problem. Uh, their, their hot, depending on close, was dipping, right? Now, that's not a case of the agents doubling the amount of phone calls. That's a case of going and looking at their offers and maybe pulling out some contingencies, given how hot the Florida market is, to, tr to, to start to drive that overall business conversion rate up. So I'm sorry for, the, for going on a little bit of a tangent there, but the goal here is really introduce just a data-driven, performance-focused model of analytics to the team, specifically around pipeline and around agent performance. Yeah, I love that. As somebody who is a CEO of a company and has had sales, many we currently employ and some we've had come and go, um, the matrix, if you don't mind scrolling back down to that, yeah. um, the matrix is so powerful because it gives me a quick snapshot with faces and names as to where people are relative to the work we're doing, right? Like as, as a, you know, as a CEO of a company, I'm dealing with a whole host of different sort of verticals within the company. I've got HR, I've got sales, I've got escrow processing, right? I'm, I, I've got, uh, it, it, I could go on. Budgeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is that, you know, I don't always have my eyes on exactly what's happening on the sales side at yeah. any given moment. Th this makes it incredibly low lift. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, if I could just zoom into something like this and and just see, okay, so uh, I've got Lisa in this example. I got Lisa hanging out in the critical space where she's converting at a you know at a pretty low uh, low percentage. Um, but I've got, you know, Claudia up there and when I give her a lead, it converts, right. Then my conversation yeah. with Claudia and my conversation with Lisa can look very, very different. And you exactly. know, like, having, having had these conversations in the past, I, you know, I, brokers and coaches, I sympathize with you because I know how these conversations go, right. It's like, Hey, Dustin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if this is Lisa, Hey, Dustin. Yeah. I am so excited. I just went to this open house and got so many business cards and I just struck up these amazing relationships and oh, the, the business is coming, it's coming, you know, but the thing is, Dustin is, you know, I've noticed that Claudia seems to be getting all of the leads that come into Lighthouse and I don't really seem to be getting any. Yeah. And I just really feel like you have favoritism here. And, you know, where I would maybe in the past without a tool like this, 
abstractly know that we do give Claudia, you know, leads, but we don't give Lisa that many leads. And maybe I'm not quite sure why, or maybe I just have this sort of anecdotal sense of like, well, you know, uh, Claudia does convert here. I can say, well, you know, Lisa, it's funny that you bring that up. I noticed that you're only, you know, you're only converting on about 1.8% of the leads that we send to you. Claudia's converting on 5x that. So you tell me, like, why wouldn't I, as the CEO of this company, continue to give Claudia more leads when I know that she's going to convert and bring in five times more deals on the same number of leads than you, right? Yeah. And and th- by the way, that's that's a bit of my leadership style is I do put it back in people's camp and make them sort of defend, you know, what they're doing yeah. and, and and think through the, the business logic. I want them to take an ownership mentality at the company. And so just yeah. having that, you know, that data right there, easily surfaced, and also, by the way, I've noticed, and I don't know, Michael, you tell me, or Ricardo even, what do you guys tell me if this is different than your experience? My experience is that the squeakiest wheels, the ones who are the most likely to t- touch base with me, are rarely the ones who are doing the most. Like, <laughs> right? It's normally the people who are operating very quietly in the background who are just killing it. And so, it, you know, it's down, baby. Yeah. Yeah, the heads down people. But as the CEO, you know, I'm always thinking about whatever, you know, it's tempting to always think about the latest story that I heard and have that be my internal narrative. And so being able to say, oh, you know, I never hear from Claudia, but dang, she's rocking it. It like, it really makes me intentional to reach out to Claudia and say, Claudia, just so you know, you're just killing it right now. And I am so proud of you. Keep up the great work. Right. Yeah. Um, and vice versa so you know as in like you know i read you know lisa squeaks the wheel i'm like you know maybe you shouldn't be updating me so much as you should be calling the people i'm sending to you like i'm glad that you're keeping me in the loop but, you know so anyway you just got me riffing because this just <laughs> yeah. on this stuff. i love it well, um, well well and one thing i want to point out is even within this i think like the lisa may not even be, uh, and just, I want to, you know, be respectful to the agents and critical <laughs> at times when I'm like, Hey, maybe it's like, maybe Lisa is, you know, or, or Terry is doing fine. But the problem is that like, we've had teams, right. Where the problem was that the ISAs were feeding in too many leads to this agent. Right. And again, the agents don't want to say no. So I could, you know, I can look at this and using follow up boss, shout out, follow up boss their phenomenal <laughs> pawn tool, right? I can just say, hey, Lisa, we're going to take all of those leads that aren't, you know, I'll go sit with her in the one-on-one, everything that you don't feel is going to close, I'm going to throw them back in a pond, let the ISA work them. And what we just see naturally is when the agent is more focused on the actual leads that are going to lead to commission, they're going to perform better. So it's a win-win like for not just the business, but for that agent as well. And then if the agent has, you know, isn't performing or gets mad about that. Yeah. Then like you, you'll see the data and we can come back and look at that and show them next month that, Hey, you, you still aren't performing against or, or, or reaching the kind of results that you want. And that's when I think you have, you really escalate that conversation with the how agent. Do you, how do you have the conversation with somebody so that it doesn't feel like they're being punished? Oh no, I, I have a good, so you start it with the phrase, yeah. don't suck. You need to stop sucking. <laughs> <laughs> Is that- I, I know I took the words right out of your mouth, Michael, but I just thought I'd jump in. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, one of the one of the 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 um uh one of the things that I've I've just seen and would love to to hear your folks' feedback as well is that um I mean this is from both my career managing people and then also what I've seen some of the very great team leads we just had on Samantha Boyd of Robert Slack. Robert Slack is uh one of our kind of mega team customers and Samantha is, is really just phenomenal at sitting down and she cares about the people, right? They know that she cares about them. But when it comes to performance, they're just looking at data. They're looking at results, right? Yeah, they're looking at the attitude and the other stuff. But but really in real estate, it's a lot about one, like it managing any other person. It's about understanding that they like, okay, what is this agent trying to get to, right? What are their goals? letting them know that, you know, you're there to help them get there. And then just looking at the results. So we have this beautiful, like one-on-one scorecard that we actually put together. And I don't want to get too deep into the, you know, just showing off product, but I think this is actually really important is a lot of team leads would go into one-on-ones prior. And there's two types of feedback that they would get. One is uh, uh, I'm doing totally great. Like, you know, I'm crushing it. 
And the other is that you're not giving me enough leads. The leads that you're giving me suck. You know, we've all seen these type of conversations. So mm-hmm. we just give our team leads or sales coaches a dashboard, right? And you can come in here and you can see that, hey, you're telling me you aren't getting enough leads, but you're only calling 13 out of the 29 new leads. So it's not about me getting on that agent as a coach. It's about me pulling up this data and then looking for opportunities to coach the agent up. Oh, you're having a hard time logging calls? Well, you should. That, we're going to buy you follow-up boss styler so you never have to log anything ever again, <laughs> right? As an example. Oh, you're running into really hard time closing pipeline, moving it from hot to penning and close. We're going to focus our coaching on the net over the next month or two on getting you good there, right? So it's, it takes out that, bias that I think uh, that we all have when we're coaching that just exists, right? Um, uh, The the bias of, you know, a lot of times they'll see an agent making all the calls, right? And they'll think that agent's doing great, but then that agent isn't getting results down funnel. And now you just have a very easy way to hold the agents accountable and get them focused on these leads that are down funnel, because those are the ones that are going to have the commission checks, (laughs) It, again, going back to the topic of of the the theme, really coaching them on moving stuff through the funnel. Yeah, well, and I love that too because it is so thoughtful and intentional as to where the coaching needs to happen. So now, yeah. if I take my CEO hat off and I put on the hat of somebody who's working for me, right? If they show yeah. up and all we ever talk about is this sort of generic, like, "Hey, here's, here's how that. you close an escrow deal." And I'm like, "Yeah, I get the big picture, but I'm really struggling over here with." you know, going from, in our case, we have pre-escrow into escrow, right? And it's like, uh, those are steps two and three. I'm really struggling once somebody commits the pre-escrow, actually getting it into escrow. And so then we can dive into that and I can feel heard, right? Because now it's like, okay, I understand the big picture, but this, it's like this one part and I'm not figuring it out. And, and we're having a meaningful, productive conversation. Um, I'm going to, sorry about that. No, you're fine. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I just, I feel like, I feel like being heard is such a, such an important part of coaching, uh, that, that it, from now putting my CEO hat on, it's hard for me to know exactly how to make people feel heard unless I have this level of insight and, you know, we use follow-up boss. It's a great tool. Um, but you do have to kind of click around a little bit to be able to, to, I guess, this, aggregate. Like, I was going to say, yeah, to extrapolate that data and make sense of it. Yeah. So talk to us. Um, you had said there's there's basically three things you guys are focused on. We covered the first one. Um, the second one, can do, do you remember what it was? Yeah. So actually, we kind of covered the the one and the two, right? Yeah, so that first kind of screen that I showed you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Well, I cut what out. Were the, what were the three just to, to, to recap? Yeah. So that. The, the, the three are team performance, right? Generating insights on what's happening as a team, choke points in the sales funnel, agents that aren't having the production that we would want to see, um, even all the way into looking at the individual agents' pipelines and figuring out where the choke points are for them. The second part of that is translating those insights into actually coaching opportunities in that one on one, which is mm-hmm. that one on one scorecard. And we have a notes section within that too. So our best team leads leave their notes, right? Within, they, they, we have a notes section. It's like a running document within Optum that they leave notes. And so when I'm going on my next one-on-one with them, I'm saying, this is what we talked about last week. This is what you said you were going to do. You said you were going to call <laughs> each lead one time. That's awesome. And then the third, And then the third is lead management, which I can show you as well, which is really kind of our hottest product out there right now within our suite, which is just focus on finding leads that are dropping and slipping through the cracks and holding the agents accountable to do that while saving the broker time. Yeah, let's let's dive into lead management. Perfect. So I'm going to, uh, can you share my, okay, perfect. There we go. All right. Is my screen up? Uh, yes, we can. Yeah, see, yeah. yeah we can perfect. see it. Got you. Sorry, I, I, I realized that I'm switching between paths. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so lead management was really uh, 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 came as a result from just listening 
to customer feedback and broker team feedback. Um, and I want to give a very special shout out to a shared friend uh, in the space, Barry Jenkins, um, uh, whose phenomenal broker team does a lot of work within the Y Lopo and, and unofficially FEB communities and so forth. And so he's helped us a lot on kind of giving us feedback on this. But essentially what, what happens with every team is that they have X amount of leads coming in and inevitably agents drop those leads. So what we've done is, and, and, and I think Follow Up Boss is a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, system of helping agents kind of categorize out their leads. You can build smart lists. There's a lot of phenomenal things that we did there. But one of just the things that we saw is that we wanted to make it very easy for the broker team lead or director of operations or lead manager to look at this in aggregate. So what we do is we take a lot of that business logic. I want every new lead reached out to within 24 hours, right? Or it should be quicker, but that just use that as an example. Um, I want every lead that's in nurture to get a personal reach from an agent every seven days, 14 days. Any, you know, they, we have all of these kind of custom rules that you can put in. And then instead of as a broker team lead, me having to go through each individual lead record, I can come in here and I can say, I have 14 new leads that haven't been reached out to, right? And I can go in and say, my computer is being a tad bit slow right now. Um, I can come in here. Uh, let me just go back up. I noticed that it said no to this reassign and i'm assuming yeah. that's what you're that's what you're pulling up but what is what is that nudge feature it yeah so the 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 nudge feature is essentially uh okay perfect we're back here so, so you can do two things with this you can nudge a lead which essentially allows you to write a custom note for that agent right mm -hmm. and say and it, it hits their follow-up boss record right because the agent's should really not be leaving follow-up boss. We think the agent should live there, but a broker wants to send them a note and say, hey, you need to follow up with this lead. So I can nudge that. And what it does is it shoots them on that lead profile in follow-up boss. It takes them in a comment and says, follow up with that lead. And then I can then go in and see whether or not they followed up. Right, so now I'm not only saying, okay, this agent dropped the lead, I can see after I nudge them whether or not they've actually followed up after I nudge them. And if they don't do anything, then I can reassign and I can reassign them to, for example, a pool, right? Or a different agent, whatever you want to reassign them to. So what this does, and we have some AI as well working in the background to show high priority leads and so forth. But what this essentially allows you to do is come in and either in mass for a rule or individually for each lead, ping the agents, hold them accountable. And, and, and the, the success of this has been incredible. We have a team out of Utah that we publish a case study with, Ames team. They're one of the top ones on real trends uh, for the state of Utah. Their director of operations, you suspend minutes daily. In addition to that, she, they have gotten, they've found $17 million of drop pipeline yeah. just in these leads of which $4 million of that is in closed or pending right now within a few months. So wow. it allows you to essentially extend your arm, get that type of disciplined operational management that you need to do no matter what, but in, you know, a 10th of the time, and then catch drop leads because every time a lead drops, it's like $10,000 going off, you know, dinging in the my head, right? You're using automation so, to layer accountability. Yeah, huh. automation and AI to layer accountability. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and aggregating the information is so powerful too. I found that uh, in, in my line of work especially, that is the most time consuming thing. It's, you know, yeah. for whatever reason, a lot of tools are really powerful at showing you what's going on on a kind of like a moment by moment or case by case basis, but they're less, they're less powerful, they're less good at showing you what's going on big picture and then sorting all of these people, all of these moments, all of these cases into just a handful of buckets uh, that, you know, are, are really relevant, right? Like that categorizes people and says things like, Hey, these are drop leads or, 
uh, hey, these are people that that reached out to you and this could be pending or this is a missed opportunity or anything like that. Like, but that's how that's how I think as a leader. Um, and so having that information is just, yeah, it's just so critical. Um, Michael, are you still with us? I don't see your video. I don't know if we lost you completely. We might have we okay. might have lost Michael completely. Um, his internet was having problems. Ricardo, uh, I'm curious, you know, you, you, uh, you work for follow up boss, you're really proficient on their tools. What are some things that stand out to you as you see Michael kind of walk through this and you, and you compare it to, to what follow up boss has, like what gets you the most excited? You, you talk about this before you, we've talked about it at length when we've talked about like just CRMs in general and it's, it's, it makes the data, it makes data actionable. It gives yeah. you intelligence or business intelligence that makes it easier for you to take action on something. The the, the we're we're doing like this big online summit, and um, I said, "What's your biggest challenge in your business right now?" And by and far, for a lot of people, it's I have my biggest challenge is getting my team to implement the tools or the things that I've that that the resources that I've given them to, to kind of operate their business. Or my biggest challenge is, well, it, I guess it's the same thing. It's getting them to take action, right? Like how do I hold my team accountable to doing these things? I feel like this makes it so low lift to, to have those conversations and, and again, be able to point at something and say, well, look, it's not, it's not the leads aren't the problem. You're only contacting 13 out of 29. Or even be able to layer that automation and say, um, you know, agents say, well, I called all the leads. I did this. I did that. Like, it's easy when you're going by your day. And especially as an agent, you're out in the field all the time. Yep. It's you forget to follow up with this person. You forget to follow up with that person. Like that part's easy. It's easy to forget to follow up. It's that automation that I think is pretty awesome because the automation says, um, or you could have it say, reach out to anybody that you haven't, you know, contacted in five days or reach out to any new leads where it's extended 24 hours. You can do that without punishing the agent and simply nudge them and say, Hey, don't forget to follow up with this person. I yeah. think that in and of itself is, is, is pretty powerful. Sorry. So sorry about that guys. I, uh, we, my team sent out a new <laughs> podcast rig and it, uh, it ate. It just is overheating and eating everything up. So I, I needed a talk. We needed Ricardo <laughs> to talk more. You know, they to, to the audience. They're exactly. like, we can't have this mug running for you know the full thirty. That's all right. No, That's we were awesome. we were talking about the things that really have jumped out so far and what we've what we've been talking about to us. I'll I'll say you know, and I think I brought this up already, but. Um, Michael, you don't know this unless you listen to the show, but I, I actually have been building a CRM internally for Lighthouse and we deployed early versions of it. And one of the reasons we built our own custom CRM for a while before, uh, you know, also working with follow-up boss is because uh, I just felt like so many CRMs, so many tools are built to have machines keep people accountable and it's just not, it's not a good way to do it. Or alternatively to have machines do all the work of like building relationships, which is even weirder, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you think about something as innocent as a drip campaign and there are definitely places for drip campaigns, but I feel like we become over dependent on them to the point where, where we think I can go meet somebody at a random mixer. I can input their information into my drip campaign. My drip campaign is going to have this whole relationship building experience with them. And then I'm going to get a commission check on the other. Money's going to fall from the sky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how it's positioned to us, right? It's like machines doing human work. And what I love about uh, Octum is that you guys, you guys recognize that it's humans talking to humans that has the most efficacy. It's humans talking to humans where you have real accountability, right? Because if a machine blips and says error, it's like, oh, screw your error, right? Uh, yeah. This is, this is the Microsoft Windows experience. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Who cares, right? Um, but, but when you're sitting face to face with your executive and your executive is, you know, empowered with decisions and they really want to focus on the things that they think are going to make you yeah. better. It's a, it's just very difficult to blow it off. And if you choose to blow it off, if you choose to not care about that human interaction, then really you're sending a signal that probably you just don't want to be there anyway. Um, yeah. and so I love that you guys, what you're doing is you're not trying to replace 
the human to human accountability mechanism, you're trying to make it more powerful, more efficient, uh, and more helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, and I know I talked a little bit about the thesis of kind of what we're trying to do for the broker team. So when we look at the, the market landscape, you know, part of me stepping into the business, I took a lot of time to evaluate whether this is where I wanted to, to, to be working in, in residential real estate. And our whole take is that this is the most important decision of a person's life, right? Financially for the average person, mm -hmm. right? And so when you have these high ticket sales items, right? You want that trusted advisor, right? That person who's going to know the neighborhood, that person that will connect you uh, and, and help you through a complicated transaction and so forth. That person will guide you. And we really have an obligation and a duty, uh, I think, as technologists within the space, whether it be follow up us, whether it be Octum, whether it be the other people, to empower these phenomenal agents and so forth and phenomenal broker teams to become almost like superhumans. I mean, we say that internally and it's a little bit, you know, of hyperbole, but, you know, the automation, we aren't replacing the agent. We aren't trying to automate their life away. We aren't trying to automate the broker team away. We're trying to give them technology that makes them powerful and that ultimately delivers a better end experience for the buyer. Okay. So I'm curious now, um, yeah. you know, in the real estate industry right now, it's easy to feel like a successful sales team leader yeah. because selling homes is a little bit like shooting fish in a barrel, right? I mean, the market is so hot. Properties are moving yeah. so fast and your top producers are probably having their best year ever. And if you're the guy who's the broker or you're their coach, you're probably like, all right, I'm pretty good at this, right? Um, but I'm curious to know when you bring your product or you bring your thesis, like your your the project you're on, even beyond the the technology and the tool you've built, when you bring that to coaches, what do they? What are they the most surprised by, or what seems to get them the most excited? Or like maybe the best way to ask this is like what seems to be the unlock that makes them realize that something like this fits into their world? Yeah, um, a couple. I think a couple things. So one is we literally turn on you you say you want to work with us <laughs> and we turn on the software and then like you know we, we we always i say you know three to five days because people's data is obviously very bad and we actually do a data cleanup and analysis for them but we have direct apa apis one-on-one -on -one integrations with follow-up boss because dan and ricardo and team have been so smart to build an open platform which no one had ever done prior to dan doing that in real estate. So one is we turn on right away. Two is they start, I think, at least in the majority of cases, one of the most beautiful things that I see is when they're looking at that, that quadrant, for example, right? Or they're looking at uh, that <laughs> agent activity. A lot of times they know that is happening within their head, but they don't have the data in front of they them. They don't have the validation. Right? So that's, that's a, a huge, I think a huge turning point is when I, as a coach, and when I'm saying coach, I'm just, I'm using that to even mean team lead, anyone that's coaching up an agent, for example, when I have that and it's just in front of me and it's showing me exactly what's happening, it allows me to actually have a coaching conversation without needing to run manual spreadsheets, right? With the data that's in there in follow-up boss in a simple and easy to understand format. And obviously there's some insights that aren't, that are gonna be different than what they think, but generally speaking, right? It's confirming, it's providing them the ability to go do data-driven coaching. So when they see that, that's, that's huge, right? I think those two things are speed of getting it up and running. And then two is just having these insights that are pre-configured in front of them that they oftentimes already know, but now that they can take and sit in front of an agent and show them, hey, here's what's happening. Um, those, those are the things, and I, I won't go too much into the future, but when I think about what we're building uh, in the future, I think that's really the most exciting, some of the most exciting things are coming up on the roadmap, and that's where it gets really interesting for the broker team leads the coaches and so forth, because the power of data science and AI, once we start really applying that, we have it today, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, we have a whole team dedicated to building out algorithms. And that's where I think things are going to, you know, we'll go from being something that's a phenomenal tool to have to something that no one is going to be able to live without. 
So what do you think people get wrong about accountability? I think that they, there is a, uh, there's a lot. <laughs> it depends on, <laughs> on the person. Yeah. But so I'll tell you. Coaches and brokers, like, you know, you yeah. talk to a lot of them. What do you think they get wrong about their idea of accountability or what accountability is for? I think that they forget that at the end of the day, you're dealing with another kind of human there. This, I mean, this, uh, the great brokers understand this, but a lot of them forget that that agent, that person on the other side has other options out there and so forth. And so what bad brokers do is they will go and they will yell at the agent or they'll talk of they'll, they'll they'll use some of those techniques right that we talked about earlier where it's kind of like you aren't doing this or you aren't doing that but they aren't actually you know using data right and, and making an actual case right when you're coaching someone like when i'm coaching my employees i you know you i, I can't just use a stick yeah i can turn off leads or so forth right but what I actually want to do is I think the great team leaders that we see do and where the bad ones get it wrong is they actually aren't using accountability is not just, hey, you're doing this wrong. Accountability also includes, hey, here is where you can actually become truly great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to coach you and hold you accountable to getting there. It's not always just a negative thing. Right. And so without actually coming with a, I think a structured framework or, or so forth, like they're just setting themselves up to fail. And by the way, when the market at some point eventually doesn't look as nice as it does today for all of us, <laughs> this is going to be a big problem. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love, I love that. I love that you're focused on, Hey, here's how we can make you great. Cause you know, people don't want to be bad at their job. Even even people who are burned out yes. on their job, they want yes. to be good. They want to be seen as as excellent. And to the degree that that their inability to excel comes down to, you know, maybe just maybe just a misalignment somewhere in the conversion process, right? You having having the information that you guys are talking about can can bring that alignment, and all of a sudden everything clicks, and excellence is like it just right around the corner. Right. Totally. Yeah. I love, I love that. Yeah. Because, because I can, you know, I, there have been many times where I have become, uh, so I've been, I've been reading this book by Jordan Peterson called 12 more rules for life. Any great and book you like the, yeah, it's been great. I had, and one of his chapters talks about uh, you know, not hiding things in the fog. Right. And, and what his point is, is that there are little things that people do that people can do on a day-to-day -day basis, which feel small. And so you just are like, well, instead of having a conversation about these little irritants, I'm just going to, I'm going to hide them like in a closet. I'm going to hide them in the fog. I'm going to hide them out of sight. Right. But what happens is they aggregate and over time it becomes big, but you're not really paying attention to it until one day it's become so big. You can't ignore it. And then you just explode because it feels huge, even though really the size of that one instance is, has remained small the entire time. And, and, you know, leading sales teams can be a lot like that where, you know, you think, well, I feel like Joe, I feel like Joe isn't really on his game today, or he said something, it doesn't make sense, but I'm just going <laughs> to let it slide because I don't want to talk to Joe about this. Joe's a bit touchy, right? And then you just make little excuses for these things that you notice that Joe is doing that you think are irritating or you think aren't advancing his sales career until some point down the road, you've let all of these thousand things that Joe has done build up in your brain and you've finally convinced yourself that Joe must want to suck at his job. Like Joe <laughs> yeah. just hates his job. And yeah. Joe is like purposefully out to be a screw off. Right. Um, and poor Joe doesn't know about any of these single instances because you never talk to him about it. And Joe is just Joeing, Right. And, uh, you know, one day you hit Joe with this, Joe, why don't you care? Like, why do you suck so bad? Like, you know, your whole narrative <laughs> that you've been quietly building up comes out. And Joe has no idea where you're coming from, right? And and I think I think that what you're doing here is you're you're surfacing all of those little instances, right? You're you're saying, you know, Joe, you, you know, we, we're noticing this problem here, uh, and let's let's dial in on it because you know we can see that there's some gap here. And Joe, by the way, I feel like, you know, look at all this work you're doing on the front end. 
you're doing so much work on the front end, buddy. Like, wow, this is amazing. But right here is where it seems to be the fault. So let's get this right. Cause I think if we do the back end's going to be like, your commissions are just going to skyrocket. How does that sound? Yeah. Like that's a yeah. way better conversation than letting the little things that Joe does pile up until you've decided that Joe yeah. doesn't care. Well, remember when we were looking at like the pipeline funnel, like this is one of the easiest conversations to have is if an agent isn't getting leads over from new leads to, and connecting with them and getting that lead engaged, right? You can actually just measure that pipeline drop off. And what we do with our teams, we actually do this in our one-on-one -on -one coaching is we'll look at these for individual agents. So you can go have a conversation with your agent and say, listen, if you were to just, if we can get you to call two more times, right, per lead or something, that's going to increase your conversion rate. We can actually estimate this. These things are not hard to do. And that's going to drive X amount more money for you, right? And yeah. what I found is a lot of times brokers assume that, again, like you said, like it's not, you can't let that stuff build up. Well, assume well, that that's may, obvious? Well, maybe that, maybe, you know, the, the, you, maybe it's a new lead source, for example. You say so you put in a new lead source as a broker and you didn't properly train the agents up on scripting and so forth for this lead source. So, may, and maybe you, even you made a bad decision on that lead source. So the agent calls and he has someone, I'm not gonna, you can, oh, I won't cuss on your podcast, but tells him <laughs> to F off. Yeah, yeah. Right? And maybe this is a new new real estate agent who's only been in this for three months, right? Um, and, and so, I mean, I'm used to this. We got admin and sales, but if I'm a new <laughs> agent, maybe right out of college, and my broker saying uh, you need to call everyone, and I called someone, and these this person yelled at me and screamed at me, never call me again, etc. A lot of that, and then the and then that obviously may affect their performance for a little while. As a broker, like that's worth having a discussion, saying, hey, this is going to happen, and here's how we can actually make these calls against lead sources better. But like. And this boils down to just being fund successful in business as a whole. Like I'm sure that you've seen Dustin. Like if it were totally automated, we would all just be trillionaires by now. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you gotta figure this stuff out, but you actually need to start by by <clears throat> by knowing knowing what's happening, having a heart to actually coach the agents, uh, and and looking at it like a business. Well, and knowing what to care about too, right? Because yeah. and I'm sorry, I keep blinking over here. I'm battling an eyelash. Um, <laughs> well, my computer went down earlier. If it's any, <laughs> what a disaster! What a disaster all the way around. Um, you know, it it it's not obvious what to care about, right? Because because all we tend to look at are it, inputs and outputs, leads yeah. in, commission checks out. Um, and there are, there are, you know, many, many steps and myriad of things in, in between. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, not all of them are of equal weight, right? Some of them are yeah. just super boring, like data input things, but some of them are really important. Like the tone of the, of the script that you're using yeah. to try and close a deal. And, yeah. you know, what I love is that you guys, you guys are looking at inputs and outputs but you've, it's clear to me you've put a lot of thought into also what a good coach or what a good broker or what a good CEO of an escrow company should care about, right? <laughs> yeah. You probably aren't working with too many of us, but, you know, we have the same problems. And, and you know, when you're, when you're busy as a leader, you're overwhelmed um, or you don't even have to be overwhelmed, but like your brain is, you know, a good leader's brain is in the future. I tell yeah. my team all the time, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking... I'm hardly thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm almost always thinking about what's going to happen in the next six to 12 months, because if I'm not thinking about it, then the, then we're going to come up on that period of time and we're going to be unprepared. Right. Yeah. Um, but what that means is that because I'm not necessarily thinking about what's happening in this moment, I, I might not know exactly what to care about in this moment. Right. And so you guys have done a lot of that lifting for us. Yeah. I mean, and that, that's a big part of it. And if you're too busy, if you're too busy pulling that data out of follow up boss and putting in a spreadsheets and, you know, spending hours, you know, per day, manually following up with each individual agent, right? You aren't going to have time to do that other, that other stuff, right? That actually drives 
Delta, just imagine instead of taking an hour to calculate all that agent's data prior to one-on-one, -on -one, I can look at follow-up boss, I can look at Octum, and now I have that hour to actually coach them. Yes. Right? So I went from two hours of, of and having oftentimes bad data and so forth into an hour of really focusing on coaching them, connecting with that person, understanding even within that agent's life what's coming up. Oh, you're, you know, your daughter is getting ready to go to college. Boom. You know, we're going to, and you want your production goals to increase because God knows how much college is these days. Like oh, yeah. th those are the, those are the type of thing that world-class CEOs in addition, I think to, you know, being forward looking about technology, being forward looking about the markets are also forward looking about managing their people more so in this business actually than pretty than any other industry that I've seen actually, because we are, you know, the teams are built around those agents. Yeah. It's like when I talk to Ricardo and, you know, we're, we're mapping out our goals. I, I always put it in terms of how many bottles of liquor will this let you afford? <laughs> um, yes. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly it now, all makes sense. <laughs> now you now you gotta account for me as well, too. So he probably just doubled that number. Uh awesome. Well, uh, Michael, this has been a real pleasure. I uh, appreciate you just coming on and, and really sharing this wisdom and, and the big ideas that you guys have here uh at Octum, what you're up to. Where can people find you besides your website, which is auctm.com? Um, yeah. Where else can people find you? Are you anywhere else on the internet publishing your thoughts? Uh, me personally, you can find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Michael Hawaii. Uh, you can also just reach out to me at Michael at Michael Hawaii dot com. Uh, if, if there's anything I personally can do to help, but I would say on for probably the majority of people on this they're going to want to go to Octum.com, sign up. I'm happy to take anyone through a full demo of the product. Uh, even if you aren't on follow-up boss and so forth, I'd be more than happy to kind of just show you around and what we're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, that would that would be it. Uh, I, I, on Twitter, you know, I keep it fairly snarky. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, I would love to connect with everyone. I just want to give a, a hat off, uh, a hat tip to both of you. Ricardo, so happy that FUB uh, Follow Up Boss has you on board. You're doing phenomenal work there, and Dustin, um, it's it's really cool to see. I think the future is really business leaders moving into media and sharing their experiences and what made them successful, and that has, I think, a huge impact on the future successes of others. So thank you for doing that. It's really really appreciated from someone young like myself. Uh, not saying that you're old, but someone that, <laughs> that, you know, wants to kind of, you know, follow in the footsteps of, uh, of individuals like yourself. It means a lot that you do it. So thank you. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. I really appreciate you saying that. Um, and along those lines, somebody who is always sharing his wisdom or whatever he wants to call it is Ricardo. <laughs> I love digging on him, but he's occasionally, occasionally, no, I mean, his stuff is, his stuff is so good. Um, you know, yes. the scripts he comes out with the automations he promotes. And so if you want to follow Ricardo, you can find him over at ricardobueno.com. Uh, he has a newsletter you can sign up for. He has a podcast in addition to this one that you can listen to. It's, it's always good stuff. He's talking to industry leaders. He's talking to people of influence in the real estate industry. Uh, he's talking with people who are coming up with new technologies and interesting products like Michael over at Octum. So check out that podcast. It's phenomenal. If you are buying or selling or refinancing your home in California and you are in need of escrow services, as you likely will be, my company would like to help you out. And one of the first ways we can help you out free of charge is by helping you know how much your closing cost will be if you are buying or selling a California property. You can go to lighthouseescrow.com. You can scroll down a couple scrolls and you're going to find the free closing cost calculator. It is an estimator and it doesn't include absolutely everything. There are some city local transfer taxes and stuff that we just don't have the power to calculate at the moment. But uh, for the most part, it will give you a very good high level estimate of what your cash in hand will be when you sell your Fat equity rich property <laughs> in the state of California that everybody <laughs> has to buy. <laughs> yes. So go do that. Uh, we would we'd love the chance to work with you. Um, and our third host, uh, who is not here today because he is speaking at a uh, national conference. Scott, everybody wants a piece of Scott. <laughs> so smart, so good. 
Uh, Scott Chang, Find My Way Home. You can find him over there at Find My Way Home. He's always publishing. He's he's writing on the latest trends. Uh, this guy this guy lives in the future. It's it's practically <laughs> unfair because he gives you he can tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. So go check Scott out. That's it for us. This has been another episode of the Marketing Trench. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>